Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Hi, okay, I'm so excited with what I get to talk to you about this week. Um, there is a book that I have experienced, uh, and I'll tell you why I use the word experience, that's deliberate. There is a book that I've experienced over the last couple of months that has changed my life. And yesterday was its publication date. Um, I got an advanced copy to read, an advance copy. And I'm, I just can't wait to tell you about this book. I think it's going to impact so many people in our Bright Line Eating community. The la I've only done this with one other book before. That was James Clear's Atomic Habits. Uh, if you got that book and read it, you know that my uh, recommendation was not squandered. It was very well placed on that book. So this is the second book that I have ever uh, recommended in a vlog other than my own books, but that's, that's a different, that's a different thing. Um, and here we go. You ready? You want to know what the book is? It is Risk Forward by Victoria Labom. Risk Forward, Embrace the Unknown and Unlock Your Hidden Genius. Now, the reason I say that this book is something I have experienced is this is not just a book filled with words. This is, this book is an experience. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe like a coffee table book or, but it's not as big as that. You can fit it in your bag. Um, this is a book. Let me explain what it's about, which is a, it's, it's not easy to explain what this book is about and why I think it's going to be so useful to people in Bright Line Eating. Uh, and then I'm going to share, um, three little nuggets from the book. Um, and then I'm going to share something really exciting with you at the end about, of this vlog about, um, Victoria and I put together uh, a sweet little surprise for you, uh, if you want it. So, okay. This is a book about liminal space. Now, I had to Google liminal space. Um, my friend Sage Levine uses that phrase all the time. Um, liminal comes from Latin uh, for the word meaning threshold, like when you're on the threshold of stepping into something new, right? Um, you're, you're right at, the, at the, the doorway or the precipice, but you haven't yet started the new thing, but you're out of the old thing. So you're in what's called liminal space. It's like being in the hallway, <laughs> like you've left one room, you're not yet in a new room, you're in the hallway. And it's the space of not knowing. It's the, it's the space where things are uncertain. It's the time when you can't see clearly. It's the in-between space. And what Victoria noticed was that, uh, very rightly she noticed, was that our society um, handles liminal space really poorly. And people um, uh, should all over themselves when they're in liminal space, that they should know, they should have clarity, they should have a five-year plan, they should have a goal. Actually, it's really cute. The, the little blurb on the back, on the back there isn't the typical like endorsements and all that. There's one sentence on the back of this, uh, two sentences on the back of this book. Some people in life know exactly what they want to achieve. This is a book for the rest of us. So cute. So cute. So this is a book about, um, it's like a guidebook. It's like a toolkit for handling the, the times in life. And they come up again and again, right? It could be minutes. It could be months. Sometimes it lasts for years, not that often, but sometimes it really does. Um, Victoria Labom starts out the book by talking about, uh, really how her life felt like years of this time of like not knowing what she wanted to do, what she wanted to be, what her career was shaping up into. Um, and that's, I think, what makes her uniquely qualified to write this book is uh, how much time she has spent in that land of not knowing. Um, so why do I think this applies to you and Bright Line Eating? Well, for a few reasons. Um, one is that I think people eat over this a lot. Um, this uncertainty. Uh, again, in part, I think, because our society um, really uh, negatively frames liminal space as something that, uh, you know, when, you, when you're not clear that there's something wrong and you better get clear right away, right? Um, and so in that rush, when there's a lot of uncertainty, I think that this 
angst that can accompany uh, this state of not knowing is something that people really eat over. So that's one is I think uh, this this book sheds light on the experience of being in that in between place. And um, maybe that that time when you have a creative yearning, but you don't know exactly what it's for, or maybe you're starting a project or you're in the middle of a project or at the end of a project, but it's not clear uh, where it's going to go or how to wrap it up. Um, or maybe you're like me and I'll talk about my situation in a second. Um, well, ha- I'll talk about it right now. Um, this book actually landed in my lap at exactly the, a moment when I was experiencing profound anxiety over a burning question, which, um, I'll share with you. It was actually, uh, what do I do with bright line eating? What do I do with bright line eating? Uh, and I'll get to that in a second, but Uh, What I meant by that was like, you know, I created this thing, I started it, um, and for the first few years, it was very clear what to do next. And over the last little bit, it has not been clear what to do next. And what do I do now with Bright Line Eating has been a burning question for me burning question and creating all kinds of angst and unrest. So this book landed in my lap at exactly the right time in my life. I was literally wandering around my house like a mad woman, sort of, you know, in my bunny slippers, you know, and David was like, uh, good morning. How are you? And I'm like, what do I do with bright line eating? <laughs> I just kept saying that this was like, not for a short period of time. This was for like weeks. Um, so I got this book and everything changed. So this is why I'm so excited to share it with you. So, um, People eat over this, but there's another big reason why this pertains to bright line eating, which is so many of us come to bright line eating with our food being front and center in our life, our weight, our food, our problem with our weight and our food, as I have said a million times, um, what we've eaten or not eaten, how many miles, how many calories, how many pounds around and around and around in our heads um, till we feel obsessed. Uh, and just, you know, sick of it, but, uh, we haven't found a way out, right? Because the weight is still a problem. The food is still a problem. When we try to make the food not a problem and we just eat what we want, that's fine. But then our weight is out of control and climbing and that doesn't work. So now we need to put some kind of boundaries on our food, but what boundaries? And we've tried all the diets and it's just, it's a nightmare. And it's a nightmare that takes up such a big proportion of our life's focus. And we've been at it, some of us, for so many years and decades that when we come to Bright Line Eating, and if we really apply ourselves and just follow the plan, that problem goes away. Like it's just handled now. And it creates liminal space, a lot of liminal space. Like, okay, well, what would I do with my life if I didn't, you know, spend 80% of my life's focus focusing on, you know, the food I have or haven't eaten, what I'm going to do next to try to lose weight, whether I should be trying to do anything about my weight and on and on and on, right? So what happens often is that people are driven subtly back to the food in some kind of way because they don't have a good way of navigating that uncertainty that comes with that liminal space. They don't, they don't know how to fill the vacuum yet. And in the waiting time when they don't know what sort of, uh, career change or project or endeavor or hobbies or volunteer work or, or, or would fill the space that food and weight used to take up, since they don't know, they let the food and the weight creep back in as a problem, literally to solve the problem of the liminal space. Like, well, that's a f- that, this isn't conscious. None of this is conscious. But they end up turning back to the food and the weight as an, a, a familiar problem because it's a really, um, at the very least, it's a very successful filler of that space, right? in that it it fills it. It really does. You can focus on your food and your weight and go around and around with that 
sucking up 80% or more of your life's focus for decades. And uh, there's ways even in bright line eating, even successfully in bright line eating, to do that. You can get, you know, almost to goal weight and hover with those last X number of pounds, right? And just be a cat chasing its tail, right? Still thinking about the food and the weight and your program and what you're going to tweak and blah, 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 as a way to fill that space. So I'm so excited to have a guidebook to hand to my community as a companion for um, these times when we don't know. We don't know uh, where we're going next. We don't know how to, we don't know what the five-year vision is, right? We don't even know what the one-year vision is or the three-week vision is, but um, this book gives us a companion guide for navigating that time in the hallway with poise, with grace, with wisdom. There's so much wisdom in this book. Let me share three nuggets from this book that I just love. Um, so the first one, and I, you know, I, I shared with you a little bit about where I was at when this book found me. I, I'm friends with Victoria LaBaume. She's a sweetheart, She's such a sweetheart. Love this woman. Victoria sent me a copy when it was hot off the presses. She FedExed me a copy with a sweet note inside. And um, this book landed and I opened it up and the first little bit says, embrace the fog of not knowing. Embrace the fog of not knowing. And I started to cry. I teared up and it was just exactly what I needed to hear. And I just put the book down and I just sat with that. I didn't want any more input. I just wanted to let that seep through my skin and my tissues and my, and my soul. Embrace the fog of not knowing. It's a precious time. And if you rush through it, you'll miss its genius. So that's the first nugget I want to share with you from that book. That was the one that hit me hardest, probably because of where I was at, how intense that fog was for me and how much I was uh, sweating and stressing over that fog. Um, so just the message to embrace the fog of not knowing was oh, so good. The second piece of genius I want to share from the book, and there are so many, there's countless, but I just picked out three. Victoria asked me not to share everything about her book in my vlog, you know, leave a few things that they could actually, you know, pick up the book and read for themselves. So I'm only sharing three, uh, but there's, I'm telling you, there's so many. Um, so a second gem from this book is um, to keep in mind what really matters to you. It's like a North Star in a way. Keep in mind what really matters to you. And the book tells you how to find out what really matters to you. It's so simple. So you ready? You ready to find out what really matters to you? She calls it the deserted island question. Okay, the deserted island question. You're on a deserted island. You're not going to survive. This is the end for you. You're dying. And there's a young person there who's going to make it. They're going to be saved. And you love them, you care about them so much. And you have one last conversation with them to tell them your one piece of advice as they go off to live their life. What is your one targeted piece of advice for that precious young one who's gonna go back to the mainland and get to live their life? Now your answer to the deserted island question says a lot about what matters to you. And I'll share with you my deserted island answer. It's uh, to thine own self be true. Be true to yourself. Now, on the next page in the book, she lists, I don't know, a dozen, a couple dozen answers to the d deserted island question. And they're so varied. They're so varied. But be true to yourself was one of them. And I was kind of cool. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. Um, so... As you navigate the hallway, remind yourself often what really matters to you. Okay. Third piece of advice from the book, third nugget from the book is, remember that the end isn't always seen in the beginning. 
As a matter of fact, often, especially with a creative endeavor, it's not. Like you start off thinking it's one way and it ends up being another way and that's fine. Um, in the book, she tells a great story about uh, Pixar. Apparently a lot of Pixar movies, and I've heard this from other places too, they start off uh, being totally other stories and then they get worked and reworked and workshopped and workshopped and workshopped. And they end up being, you know, up, uh, which did not start off that way at all, or uh, Inside Out or these other amazing movies, but they didn't start out that way. Um, Bright Line Eating didn't start out the way it is. It was, I never had the idea to create a course and a community and an email list and, and shoot weekly vlogs and none of that. That was not my idea. My idea was to write a book that would become a New York Times bestseller and change the public narrative about What's the deal with why people can't lose weight, that food addiction is real, here's how it works in the brain. I was just going to write one book that was going to change the public narrative. That was it. That was my that was my idea. And it turned into this whole other thing. It turned into, you know, it turned into what we have here on Brightline Eating, which is so different. It's a community. It's a set of courses. It's a it's a roadmap to follow. It's a, an education program. It's a weekly vlog. It's all these things, right? And the book ended up happening um, eventually, but uh, it turned out, you know, I started off with the intention to write a book, but it turned out to be this whole other thing. So remember that the end does not, you do not need a clear vision, um, maybe just a glimmer, just a glimmer of something and just start, just start. You don't need a business plan to start a business. Um I did not just advise you to start a business without a business plan. <laughs> Sometimes a plan is good, but I don't even know. Like, I didn't have a business plan when I started Bright Line Eating. Like, really, actually, I have to think about that. Would I recommend someone start a business without a business plan? Sometimes I'd have to hear their idea and I might actually say, why don't you just go do that? Yeah. So anyway, all right. <laughs> Sometimes I got to be careful what I say. I'd like, wee. <laughs> okay, so... Those are three nuggets from the book. If you are interested in this book, I have to say it's available right now. And I have one piece of advice. Do not just buy one because what will happen is you will instantly have, after you read it, 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 it's a quick read, hour and a half. After you experience this book, after you experience this book, you will instantly have two or three or four other people that you need to send it to. So I would say by three minimum, I'm not just saying that, I'm just saying, you know, I only got one, Victoria sent me one. I now need to go buy three or four more. Um, I can, yeah, easily three more and I have other people in mind probably too. Um, and let me tell you, if you want to just, I'm, I'm sweetening the deal here. I really want people to buy this book. I think it's going to be incredible for our community. And I want the conversations to start in our community. So there's a link to buy the book down below here. It just goes to Amazon or Barnes and Noble. You pick. Um, uh, I think it's cheaper on Amazon, but some people don't like Amazon. So that's fine. Um, so I put two links down there, Amazon and Barnes and Noble. You pick. And I have some, I'm so excited about this. Okay. Um, if you send us an email, the email address is RF for risk forward, RF at brightlineeating.com. Just the initials, no periods or anything, just RF. Doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. It's not, emails are not case sensitive. RF at brightlineeating.com. RF at brightlineeating.com. And send us the receipt from you buying the book any way you want to take a picture of it take a screenshot of it um type in the order number and where you bought the book just type those in to the email we'll accept any form of proof there will, there will be an actual human being on the bright line eating team looking at your email we want actual proof that you actually bought the book and then we will email you back two links the first is a link to a conversation that i recorded earlier today with Victoria Labom. And in that conversation, you get to hear more about the book, you get to hear more about her. And, and I tell my story of what I ended up realizing. I like this book changed my life. And I ended up realizing the answer to that question, what do I do with Brightline Eating is in that video. Like I, I, and I talk about, there's like five or six pages from this book that ended up shifting my thinking in profound ways that step by step guided me to a whole new place. Like I am right now not in the fog of not knowing. It lifted through this book. 
I'm not promising that all of your, you know, that you'll get out of the liminal space with the book. That's sort of not the point. But the point is that um, this book helped me figure out what to do. Like, I'm so excited. And if you want to know what's happening with the Bright Line Eating Movement, it's in that video. So, um, yeah. And the other link we're going to send you is a conversation between Victoria Labom and Frank Oz who's her husband, and she uh, mentions him a couple times in the book. Um, I didn't know who Frank Oz was when I first met him. I'm friends with Victoria, so I met Frank, and uh, I didn't know who he was, but I found out later, Frank Oz is, uh, you, you probably know a lot of the things about Frank Oz, like I did when people told me, oh, oh, okay, I do know who he is. Frank Oz um, uh, is the director of 12 movies, including some of my favorites. He directed Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors, one of the best movies ever. Um, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, What About Bob? I remember seeing that movie, What About Bob, with my dad. We just laughed so hard. We were just, it was the funniest movie ever. If Daddy, if you're watching this, do you remember that? You remember seeing What About Bob with me? Was that such a great day? Such a great movie. And Frank Oz also was with the Muppets for 30 years. And he was the original founder of characters like uh, Miss Piggy and Grover and Cookie Monster and Bert from Bert and Ernie. Oh my gosh. And then of course, he, um, he created the Yoda character, right? So he performed Yoda. I, I didn't know Victoria, um, says that like some people are like, I don't know what Yoda is. Is that a little guy in there or what is that? So Yoda was, um, was a puppet and Frank Oz brought that puppet to life through the manipulation of the puppet and the voice and the whole, coordination of the whole thing, like the Muppets, right? Like Yoda was a, was a Muppet, essentially. Yoda was a puppet. So uh, Frank Oz was Yoda, um, as well as all, it was just, a, just an incredible creative luminary. So they talk, they have a conversation about creativity um, and, and their experience with the principles in this book. And if you want to get access to that discussion, I believe in there, Frank talks about, I haven't seen it yet, because as of the recording of this video, they haven't had it yet. So they're about to have it in three days from now, which is before this video will come out anyway. So uh, time is crossing in space here, but um, that didn't make any sense. You get what I mean. Um, but I haven't seen it yet. But I think the plan is that they're going to talk about like some movies that Frank started to shoot where they didn't know how it was going to end. And they were actually like filming and they didn't even know how it was going to end yet. Anyway, he's going to tell some stories. It should be fun. I can't wait to see. So um, let me just summarize for you. If you want all that, now you don't have to do all that. Um, I hope that you've gotten some interesting nuggets from this vlog just about the notion of liminal space, the idea of um, giving it more respect and dignity, like understanding that sometimes in life take percolation to embrace the fog of not knowing to keep in mind what really matters to you during those times and to be willing to step out even if you don't know what the end is going to look like yet. Um, but if you do want to get the book and you want those specials, again, you just send an email to us at rf at brightlineeating.com, rf for risk forward, rf at brightlineeating.com. And I'm just going to throw in one last little sweet thing. Uh, this, this vlog is coming out on Wednesday. Now act fast because the Frank Oz, uh, Victoria Labom discussion is coming down. Uh, it's coming down. I don't know exactly when, but like just a matter of a few days. So that's coming down soon. But this weekend, so this is Wednesday, this weekend, I'm going to search online for some posts on social media. If you take a picture of yourself with the book, Risk Forward, if you take a picture of yourself with the book or without the book, I don't care if you just take a picture of yourself having ordered the book um, and you put in that social media post, I don't care what social media platform, um, put in that social media post, hashtag Risk Forward and hashtag Bright Line Eating and make it creative, I will search around on the internet and I will find one person who posted something creative and amazing and I will call them personally. So I'll have to probably send them a direct message within that social media platform, say, hey, it's Susan Pierce Thompson, you wanna hop on the phone? And then I'll be all yours for a few minutes and um, yeah, uh, we'll just chat it up. And if you want to talk to me on the phone, then go ahead and get the book and post it on social media 
and I will come search you out. And I love, I love doing, I, th I did this with the cookbook, the Bright Line Eating cookbook that came out and it was so fun watching people's creativity. So I'm doing that again and I love calling people randomly on the phone and just getting to know, know them a little bit. It's really sweet. I've done that a lot actually. So that's how it goes. I'm so excited about this book. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift to the world, Victoria. It changed my life. I'm so proud of you. And for you watching this vlog, um, I hope you do decide to get it because it is, in my opinion, an incredibly powerful companion for what for many of us used to feel like the most challenging times in life. And with this book by my side, I'm telling you, I don't think I'm going to see it that way anymore. I really don't. So that's the weekly vlog, a little treatise on, um, on liminal space and the book Risk Forward. I was just thinking there about the word treatise. I don't know if that's a word. <sighs> that's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.